Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. This week on the Geek Fruit Podcast, we're talking about Batman, ghosts, poop monsters, all in animated form. Justice League Dark. Happy listening, you nerds. Hi, you nerd. Welcome. To Thank you. The Thanks show. for welcoming me. In a rare uh, episode, there's only two people. Or oh, were there only two people last time you also spoke? In, last uh, time I was on. Yeah, last time you were on. Yeah, yeah it was just me and me and then Karan. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so last the the previous episode we had our producer on the show, who's actually here right now. He's just hanging out. Say hi. Hi, guys. Yeah, you can hear him from the distance. <laughs> cool. So just new. What's up, man? How's it going? How you been? Where have you been at? In. <laughs> Down, down the hall Okay, cool Alright, alright all right. Cool, cool, cool Doing not much So we have a, a Doing not much Kind of episode Today as well <laughs> uh, uh, But it's a It's a It's a kind of a Important one I want to say It's one that I forgot about For like a little bit okay. In that I It slipped my mind That it was happening Yeah I was actually more Conscious Or rather I'm still More excited for the um, Adam West one That's out already What? Yes Wait a minute It's out already when so, did that come okay, out? one second. So, to give some context to people who are listening right now, uh, of course, a big part of uh, all the superhero stuff that we, you know, we watch, apart from the live action, the really good stuff is in the animated stuff. Uh, and so, DC Comics has always had a, an an upper hand over Marvel, I'd say, or you know, in, in terms of the animation run, they've done some amazing stuff. Obviously, Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, these are some names that have just been associated with a, a couple of decades worth of beautiful animated stories that are straight lifted from the DC Comics. You know. Universe. And so they have made their own universe and it's been christened many different things like the DC anime, DC AU even. Uh, we've got some beautiful characters from that like Harley Quinn, which is now in the in the movies as well. Uh, also from the DC AU. Today we're going to be talking about one of those movies, which is the most recent one, I'd say, um, set in a kind of continuity that's been happening over the last two, three years. I'd say um, And this movie You're going to be talking about In today's episode Is called Justice League Dark So when the hell Did the Adam West one come out? It came out last year um, End of what? last year I saw the trailer November I saw the trailer for it Like just a yeah, few yeah. months ago Yeah and it came out A few months ago <laughs> What? How come we yeah, haven't yeah. Talked about that? We haven't yet We should But I, I think this is important To kind of talk about because I feel this robbed is, <laughs> Uh, Ro- Rob, Robin. No, no okay, don't no. even. All right, all right. Uh, hey, they've been robbing you of some. Films. I need to. What's it called? I need to go back and watch this then. It's called the Cape Crusaders. Son Batman of a Batman, Robin, the Cape Crusaders. Son of a bat. Yeah, it's it's son of a bat. Also, not included in this film because he's a big part of this universe. Oh, well. So, uh, quickly, just before we begin, so there was an established continuity. Like, if you if you think about it, back in the nineties, there was the. Paul Dini, Bruce Timverse, which happened with, you know, the Justice League Unlimited shows and the Batman show and the Superman show, all voiced by, you know, the ones that we are very familiar with. Uh, then they kind of took a break from that. You know, Kevin Conroy came back for the Arkham games. So did Mark Hamill, etc. And uh, then in the middle, we got some Injustice games where some of the characters returned again. But then they decided to kind of reboot their animated line to kind of form a singular continuity, just like they have you know, done in the comics before. And we've got a new 52-esque kind of lineup, which was um, more or less the same lineup we see, but with a new cast. Uh, it had Superman, it had all your f- same people. It had Superman Flash, it had a Green Lantern, it had um, Martian Manhunter, and was started off by a movie called Justice League War, which came out a few years ago, and then followed up by many movies, which kind of toyed with the same... It had the same cast and the same animated style and the same characters. It had Bad Blood... Uh, which was a story about uh, the introduction of Damien Wayne, which is Talia Al Ghul's child with Bruce Wayne. Hmm. Uh, they had Batman versus Robin, where you know Damien goes, you know, rogue and he tries to, you know, destroy all the enemies of Gotham by himself. Particularly the isn't Damien in the Omen? Damien is the Antichrist. Yes, this is the the child of. You know, whatever. It happens. Yeah, and it so uh, yeah, <laughs> not casually selected name by the yeah. way. So <laughs> Damien was in Batman versus Robin, which is the Court of Owls storyline. They had an assault on Arkham storyline, which was. Treated as a Batman film, but it was actually a Suicide Squad film, which is still better than the actual Suicide Squad live action film. Which brings us to Justice League Dark, mm-hmm. a movie once again 
It's like Batman is the Hugh Jackman Wolverine of yep. the <laughs> of the series. Pretty much. You can't make a movie without him he even had, in an animated form. I feel like he had like less than 50 lines in this entire movie. Well, he, I mean, he, and he doesn't say much generally as yeah. well. Yeah. So, uh, just to kind of preface what Justice League Dark is, why don't you give them an idea of what it is, Jishnu? What who? I knew nothing of this going into it. What, really? I knew... I, I've read all of no, one no, DC that, comic that's, in my life. Fi- that's fine. Yeah. Okay, should I? <laughs> yes, because right. I went in blind. So, uh, the, so uh, one of my favorite... Uh, the, one of the phases of my life where I read most of the comics was in the New 52 when they rebooted it for the third time. But they did a really good job, DC Comics, in, in rebooting it in, in a very, very new, fresh fashion. And it was called the New 52, dubbed the New 52. Lots of great uh, story arcs, including Court of Owls, which was made into an animated movie I was just talking about. Uh, one of the comic book arcs was a new thing called Justice League Dark, where they took characters from from different uh, imprints, the vertical line, etc. Like Hellblazer, which featured a character that Keanu Reeves has played in a movie called Constantine. John Constantine, supernatural uh, kind of protector, walks a fine line between it's the... all I could think of in the, uh, while I was watching the whole thing. <laughs> what would Keanu do? What would Keanu do? Okay, so yeah. now, uh, there was a lot of objection to that film. While I did enjoy that movie, because I enjoy Keanu Reeves playing this dark kind of hero, uh, a lot of objection to it because it was not like the comic books. He was not Irish, he, didn't, he wasn't blonde and blue eyes, he didn't have you know he wasn't snarky he didn't have many cool powers but it was treated well like as a different movie but it wasn't the one that we love as in, in the comic books so John Constantine was a character that was inducted into this you know kind of ragtag bunch of dark heroes and anti-heroes if you will uh, you know doing the job that the Justice League cannot do basically it, it doesn't matter how much strength that Superman has or Wonder Woman has or anybody has it can't uh, fight like dark powers which you know don't rely strength but they rely like you know intellect and and uh, you know dark force and magic and things like that supernatural elements at least and uh, so they did this entire run which was quite nice I don't remember too much of it I didn't continue but it um, had a big uh, lineup some of which weren't in this uh, animated film but there was Swamp Thing which is another mm-hmm. character created by Alan Moore amazing like a, a basically a guy who's who is resurrected by the swamps he's like he's basically Gaia from Captain he's Planet Gaia. <laughs> he's Gaia he's More Gaia crucial. there is a dead man who was actually not in the original lineup but he's there in this film he's basically uh, this uh, a trapeze artist called Boston Brand he is you know he's kind of a Vagrant is that a word? A, that he had a similar story as Robin, though, in that and no, that but Robin didn't sleep with a bunch of people and you know with a bunch of true, married men's but wives. The, but they're both circus dudes who yeah, had, circus like, dudes who tragic tragic accidents happen. Story thing. But the funny yeah. thing is that Lord Ramakrishna <laughs> uh, yeah. brings uh, Boston Brand back to life, saying, you know, he feels sympath, you know, sympathizes with him and says, you know, you'll be back to life. Why was there but a you Hindu have- god? Because there are Hindu gods. That's just, what it is. Just arbitrarily. Yeah, is sure. he Hindu? Who he? No, yeah. no, he's not. But she feels uh, she feels pity on him because he's actually a good soul, and so she says you can uh, you you have you know you can atone for whatever you have done in your life by you know um, inhabiting the the spirit of like people and basically going into them, possessing them, and you know making them do the right thing. So there's Dead Man. There's Zatanna, who's obviously a very famous character from the comic book. She's one of the more popular ones. She's been part of the Justice League. Uh, she's a magician. She's got a bunch of powers, but she uses her powers mostly for you know. Uh, you know, entertainment. She's, mm-hmm. she's uh, but a magician by trade. A magician by trade. Yeah, but she actually has powers. And uh, who else is there? There is also one of my favorite characters, actually, Jason Blood, who is Etrigan the Demon. Etrigan is really cool. Great uh, slam poet. Yeah, great slam poet. He only speaks in <laughs> verse. He's a very eloquent uh, demon. He's he's got the powers of a demon. He's got breathe fire. He's got Im- immense strength and some cool magical abilities. And he basically and possesses chaddies. the yeah, and chaddies. And he basically <laughs> possesses the uh, the the body of Jason Blood, a knight from the um, from the medieval ages, you know, times of Camelot. In fact, that's a big part of this this movie's. Uh, story. So, mm-hmm. so this is these are the characters. So now, just to give a little more history, this Justice League Dark has been trying to become a thing for a very long time. Guillermo del Toro was also involved in trying to. He wrote the story bible. He, hmm. You know, Guillermo del Toro has spent a lot of time in development hell. You know, with all his movies, including Pacific Rim, yeah. etc. And you know, this was one of those uh, movies that he wrote and did a lot of work for. Didn't happen. And it would have been so cool. You know, think about this movie and think about how Guillermo would have treated it. It would have been amazing. Uh, but at least we got an animated form of it because the comic books uh, did pretty well. And so, in another twist, weird twist of fate, uh, Constantine, the TV show, was made on CW. 
uh, they cast Matt Ryan in the role, who mm-hmm. did a great job because he was actually like the character for the first time ever. But the show wasn't as good, so it got cancelled. But yeah, the character the, was great. The show failed, right? So Constantine once again appeared in Legends of Tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And they actually got him to voice the character in this movie. So oh, that Constantine, this, the, yeah, the Legends the, Constantine the, guy voiced. The yeah, the same Constantine oh, nice. in the TV show vo- voiced cool. this character. That's... And now he's getting his show back, but in animated form. <laughs> So how bizarre uh, is that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think I, be, I think I follow you. Yeah. So he's, he he was a live <laughs> he action costume. He's an animated costume. Cool. All right. So uh, so that is the this is an elaborate preface for for this uh, movie. And uh, so just now, why don't you actually get into the story of this movie? It's a very short film. It's a one hour fifteen minute yeah. film. So why don't you quickly I, give I pre- us the premise? I appreciated premise. the length. Just <laughs> I did. I did. Really I, did. I will tell you, like it makes it made a big impression on me when I when I saw on my player like um hour fifteen. Yeah, this that's doesn't a exist. bold move. This doesn't exist. That doesn't anymore. happen. An awesome. Animation. I love it. Okay, oh, great. great. Um, so how does how does it kick off? Because it starts with um, it starts with a bit of a just prologue. A bit of a prologue in that there's in media res of this random acts of violence happening where people see demons in front of them nobody knows why the Justice League comes in and they're like this makes no sense uh, Soups calls everybody together Batman is frowning and saying well you guys are not going to be able to solve this I'm going to go tragic. away that little intro of his is also quite tragic because in his scenario he saves a woman who sees her baby as a demon as one right. of those demons and she's about yeah and it's dark as hell it owns, it owns that dark um, just that dark one moment word where, on the title immediately so basically what happens is she's trying to get rid of the baby but she's on this huge uh, you know thing of this church at the right, uh, right at the top and she tries to throw the baby Batman saves the baby but as he's saving the baby, he realizes the woman's jumped and killed herself. Yep. And this one moment, he looks at the baby and looks at the dead parent and he's just like, I'm sorry. And I was just like, that's great. Yep. I love that because yep. that's just Batman. That's Batman's um, story. More, more so than anything, the one thing that, I mean, I'm, I'll bring this up again later, I'm sure, is the one thing that stuck with me immediately, which mm-hmm. resonated all the way through, was that very similar to the Killing Joke animated movie, which mm-hmm. I loved. I absolutely loved it. Right. Um, was the use of just diegetic sound as opposed yeah, to soundtrack. Yeah. And the way this whole thing starts off is like minimal music, if any. And then you're just left looking at these people standing in silence, staring at each other. Just the way you would if it was like an actual film. Like it wasn't, these movies are being treated in a very distinct way that is mimicking live action film as yeah. opposed to a classic cartoon where, 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 where in a cartoon you have oral cues to trigger like now you should feel sad here's sad music now yeah, you should feel happy yeah. here's happy music these guys or, are doing a better job than a lot of real live action they films. are they yeah, are yeah, yeah. and you would think on paper it doesn't actually make good sense to have five seconds of footage of just two cartoon characters looking at each other right. with no music to, to sort of navigate your emotion mm-hmm. but they sort of like treat the viewer as an adult because viewer should be an adult because it's pretty it's grim. an R-rated film it's the only yeah. second R-rated film since uh, The Killing, Killing Joke, Joke as right? well yeah. and like I said it owns that R-rating immediately yeah. especially with like you know babies dying and yeah. mothers jumping off buildings Gosh. and things like that and so um, anyway so all that all that goes down the Justice League gets called together and they have no idea what's going on um, Batman says he's quite screw skeptical you. As he says usual, screw yeah. you guys I, I don't trust you all to figure this out I'm gonna go pout for a bit and shave <laughs> half naked yeah. which he does right that, like that was a weird choice for them I remember I saw an um, what do you call it not a trailer but like a clip that uh, DC put up mm-hmm. from the thing and leading up to it right. they put out the scene of Batman just shaving where he gets tries it, to get possessed by yeah, a dead man yeah. he almost gets possessed yeah um, with what was the word that was written everywhere Constantine, On the yeah, was Const- it Constantine yeah, yeah, yeah it was just Constantine yeah. <laughs> yeah. Constantine was written everywhere and so he goes Chasing after that lead, yeah, which leads him to where does he go straight, so straight so after that? He, he goes to Zatanna, I think. Look, does he go straight to Zatanna? He goes to Zatanna to, or, or yeah, he he basically goes to Zatanna saying, "Hey, listen, you know, I know that you actually have real powers. I want to say that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Something to that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, effect, yeah, basically. And uh, basically, he's yeah, he does go uh, to find Zatanna and Zatanna um, and Dead Man. Basically, kind of lead him to the House mm-hmm. of Mystery yeah. uh, to meet Constantine. Yeah, yeah. upon. Meeting Constantine is when yeah. things go really tits up yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. in more ways than one. Now, for me, as an as an outsider to this, somebody who wasn't familiar with mm-hmm. most of the characters yeah. that we were being introduced to, I thought they did a good job of bringing me up to speed with things. Yeah. But that being said, it was a little labored. Did you enjoy this movie? I don't know. I did enjoy the movie. Yeah. Because I loved it. it. I thought ended, it was It ended a little all right. Sure, the ending, yeah. was, the ending was kind of meh, but yeah. I was along for the ride simply because of how 
out there it was and the one thing that I couldn't yeah, get out of my yeah, head the one yeah. thing I could not get out of my head which I'm sure I will never get out of my head when watching anything DC and Marvel for the next foreseeable future yeah. is that they're aware of what the other guy is doing mm-hmm. and so now that Doctor Strange has been entered in the, yeah, into the equation course, I was like this saying. seems like a natural choice for them to want to combat that and but, you know I found this I don't know why I found the magic way cooler than Doctor Strange I mean like in, in the sense that um, in very similar to how Warcraft kind of handled like a bit of the magic you know with the arcane symbols and things like that I suppose yeah I, I thought that was really neat. I did I yeah. did enjoy I did enjoy the use of actual spells yeah, which were missing cool. which was missing in Doctor Strange you know like you know, especially incantations and things yeah, like that yeah, 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 that, like, was that was so cool that was neat yeah. um, it, it just gave it that much more gravitas and it, it, it felt it gave more it so much history you know yeah. it's like you know that this guy knows what he's doing like Constantine he, you know he's well acquainted with these arts yeah. and you know that you know I mean throughout the throughout the entire you know film you know he's portrayed as this guy who's basically an asshole yeah. right he's he's not a good guy he's you know uh, he's basically been a dick to like Every single one of these characters, mm-hmm. who, which is why he's also, you know, apprehensive of being the leader of this of this group and things like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I just found that you know it gave it a lot of history. It gave it a lot, and like you said, in media res, like I think the importance of having Batman in this story is to be us. You know, like yeah. we have to see what yeah. the hell is going yeah. on. And yeah. even he's just like, okay, cool, this is happening. I'm just gonna I'm gonna deal with it, like how Batman deals with anything. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. We're gonna take a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk about the actual story of this uh, this plot. And why I actually enjoyed this way more than the last few films that have come out from the DC animated universe. Finding the right drink at the right place can be a big challenge. Exploring a new destination to its fullest could be a daunting task. So tune in every Friday and listen to the Drinks and Destinations podcast with Rajita and Samira, who introduce you to the world of fine wines, beer, spirits and travel. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audio Boom, or any other local podcast app. Right, we're back with the Geek Food Podcast. We're talking about Justice League Dark. Very complex film, complex plot. You know, for being only an hour and 15 minutes, there's a lot yeah, in this film. So, my overall impression, like I said, was that I did really enjoy it. Yeah. But... Um, during the break, we tried to go through the synopsis, and we yeah. couldn't. We couldn't even finish the synopsis. Yeah, because it's, it's a very. It's a. In hindsight, you don't realize how much stuff is crammed into this, and yeah. I feel like it's definitely going to be better off for somebody like you that's well versed in this stuff. Because for somebody like me who's learning as I'm going with the characters that I'm meeting in this thing, uh, I now realize why I can't remember too many specific details because <laughs> there were a lot of specific details. You meet <laughs> there's a lot, you meet there's a, a lot, lot of new characters, and I do specifically recall feeling a little. Um, tired by the time we got to Merlin and stuff like that okay, I was like yeah, yeah, we're yeah, getting yeah, yeah. three layers of backstory to like one random guy whose importance I wasn't even totally sure of at the time I didn't yeah. know like how relevant but is this gotta, guy right now you gotta know that everything's probably involved if they're gonna spend an hour and 15 minutes they're gonna use everything super well here's the thing though I mean it's called Justice League Dark right yeah, and yeah. we met the Justice League at the very beginning we meet yeah. Wonder Woman and Superman they do their thing we see Green Lantern for a hot second Green Lantern comes in again at the very end as <laughs> yeah, well we see true. Flash in the background we see all these other characters yeah. who I don't know if they're gonna come back or not they very yeah, well could yeah, they may yeah, not yeah. Um, and yeah you're right Batman does kind of play the, the audience's role of like yeah. sort of being the outside perspective mm-hmm. on everything but yeah, there was just so much going on that uh, maybe this would have been better if it was like a, a series or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe like a I mean, they, so they are making that break it up in kind some of way. S- story. So, uh, anyways, uh, let me just uh, quickly kind of get through the main points of the story. So, Constantine is you know being uh, recruited as the main leader of this you know uh, ragtag kind of team. Uh, because they're trying to find who are these demons who are possessing people all across the world and, you know, causing so much havoc. Um, what they don't realize, at least, is that it's got to do with a very small preamble of a scene that Constantine has right at the beginning of the film where he, you know, in a high-stakes kind of poker game, which he wins using magic, he cheats and he gets this thing called the Dreamstone, which kind of becomes the MacGuffin of the film. Um, what happens is Batman, Zatanna, Deadman, they all kind of try to find out what is causing these things and they meet one of their friends one of Constantine's old friends who's kind of developed like a magical cancer uh, because of something that Constantine has done in the past so he's obviously got ill feelings towards him but he nonetheless kind of gives him a device that will allow him to enter the mind of one of these victims and uh, so this goes leads to a very cool scene which we're going to talk about right now so it happens in a hospital where it's a little you know arcane kind of 
coin and they place it on the forehead of this guy and uh, Zatanna and Constantine who have kind of got like a thing going on mm-hmm. uh, at least they did earlier it's hinted at they enter the mind of this guy and you know you know that was the scene where i was just like the moment they enter the mind i was just like wow this is this is going to be like mm-hmm. as trippy as it gets mm-hmm. and you know as they visit these little memories they try to see and it's pretty dark there also because oh, yeah. all the memories they're seeing of this guy of this victim are oh, like child it's, abuse it's all child abuse it's you know it's just like really dark stuff and i and i felt and it's not even addressed in the film but perhaps you know all the demons are possessing people who have had like these you know who yeah. basically have had histories of like a really dark history and have the undertones of like being an evil person or something like that it was weird but they say seemingly you know normal people but you know even yeah. normal people have a really dark past which i found really intriguing but they don't dwell on that uh, as much uh, while this is going on um, A demon is basically Being formed uh, We don't know how And this is the most Bizarre part And I don't know how They made this a real thing So <laughs> they, The shot cuts to A bathroom in the hospital And From the sewage of, And it's titled As the feces monster Poop monster A poop monster Literally it's just Brown and liquidy And gross It had legs though right Yeah I mean it had Whatever yeah. it wanted <laughs> And it just goes on to attack these people And Deadman uh, and Batman are kind of picking up the pieces And just trying to protect people from, you know And it's cool, that Deadman has some really cool uh, powers there Because he kind of possesses people and help them jump out of the way yeah, You know, yeah. it's really, really slick uh, sequence but I really just, want to know how they pitched that at some executive I meeting man. Like, I just love the idea of a bunch of white guys in suits On the 50th floor of some really fancy, important building Who have yeah. nothing to do with comic books But they're just like the sales people of DC <laughs> or whatever Who like couldn't care less about like creative you know, anything I'm pretty Sure this is they a, have to say the words Poop monster Then enters the room <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm pretty sure It's an arc from the comic I wouldn't uh, have made it Into the film And crazy. you know And it's I, You know I didn't even think There would be dark In that kind of way Also just like Weirdly but, gross And but bizarre But speaking of the context Of like yeah. DC in general like In the DC versus Marvel You know Infinite battle mm-hmm. um, With the main flack That DC has been getting Of late With the with the DCEU at least With the movies Has been that They take themselves too seriously They're too dark They're too this And too that And then I really loved Killing Joke, and I did really enjoy this one yeah, for yeah. because of they because they were also really dark. But yeah, I think they were done well. Yeah, they were basically they well. what they wanted to do with the DCEU and failed. They got right they with the animated, animated series, animated, yeah, right. But then you throw in the poop monster, and then you just and astral planes and this kind of it's stuff, a weird and like one. jumping into people's it is minds. Weird. So I I think this one was just a little confuddled because of the severity of like going from like one end of the spectrum all the way to the other in like the blink of an eye but that being said I really do appreciate how much of a risk they're willing to take yeah, by throwing but, in like you know, I'm gonna have babies dying and mothers jumping off buildings and then a poop monster but here's the in thing, the same though, story uh, tell it's me great. like they could have you know because it's supernatural because it's like anything it could have literally been anything it could yeah. have been a, a ectoplasm yeah, exactly. monster but they decided to go they with poop s- because it's so memorable now like I, we'll never forget this. the poop is the best man if poop you, monster in this movie and yeah. it's it's weird but it's, it's there and you know just like how Batman is just seeing this shit happen literally <laughs> it, and it's just like wow okay I guess that's a thing how did, they, how did he kill it? Uh, he basically he, That's an awesome way He, he, ba- awesome. he backlogged he, No he basically um, He sees the sprinklers go off yeah, Because yeah, it's yeah. hit the sprinkler yeah. The smoke system And he basically takes the defibrillators And throws uh, it on yeah, <laughs> It's yeah, yeah. awesome It's it's so Batman That's like He's like In his head I can't imagine what ba- Batman is thinking How would Batman Fight a poop monster He's just like <laughs> Defibrillate Like electrocute that shit <laughs> Oh man it's So funny But anyway So continuing with the story They kind of go on And they come back To the house of mystery uh, To find Richie being you know, I mean, because he's dying, he's got these shrouds, which are basically like grim reapers who are trying to collect his soul as soon as he passes. Dementors. Yeah, pretty much. And they have, they're literally pulling his soul out of his body when Batman comes with an EpiPen and stabs him, <laughs> brings him back to life. So cool. Full blown kill Bill. And yeah, amazing. And uh, he says also, not everything requires magic. I love yeah. that. The yeah. few one liners, he just owns it. That's all great. he was in this movie. He was Pretty just much. a bunch of one liners. Yeah, just like, cool guy, like, Batman. Because <laughs> the thing is, he's the one character that you know everybody that's watching this knows. Like, if yeah. you're watching this movie and you don't know who Batman is, then you're a complete idiot. I'm enough of an idiot for not knowing anything besides Batman, but at least I know Batman. <laughs> yeah, but and if you know yeah. Batman Then you know exactly Where his head is at So yeah, he doesn't need much. to say anything Because yeah. he's like I'm Batman We all know exactly What you're thinking <laughs> So true So when he says anything It's gotta be funny It's good It's 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 really great And uh, a lot of his lines In the movie are just Hmm <laughs> It's really cool Anyway so They find uh, Jason Blood Who's Etrigan the demon At the store And they kind of go into This backstory about how is, In his time at Camelot yeah. There was a 
an evil figure called Destiny who basically had this very dream stone which is now uh, in the possession of uh, Constantine. And as you uh, as you see that little backstory unfold, you see the the origin story of Etrigan, how his uh, you know he's uh, fused with uh, Jason Blood to keep him alive. Merlin kind of fuses both their spirits together, and uh, go on and so forth. Then we realize that Destiny is kind of really the main villain, in a weird way because um, Richie sends them on a kind of the same guy who's been dying because of his magical cancer. He turns out to double cross them because he's made a deal with Destiny. <laughs> he's made a deal with Destiny and he kind of sends them on a merry chase uh, with uh, uh, Felix Faust, another big character from the DC Comics who's, uh, again, a magical kind of yeah. uh, supervillain. Uh, but, uh, and this is a really, I, I mean, I found that I found that sequence really weird because you know the, he's the, a very, the battle the battle yeah, yeah because his I mean, voice, the battle, his was, just voice weird. was weird his voice just really threw me off so that actor is a very famous actor and he does a lot of funny roles for example he is in Kung Fu Panda he's uh, Poe's father the duck oh, the goose duck, I love that guy yeah he's a great guy but I he's a comedic yeah. actor right and he's he's, he's in, been in Jackie Chan he's, yeah, like one of those he's, he's been in like staple m- martial arts starring it, Samuel Hung exactly yeah, yeah. Like, I know that guy he's, I love a, that he's guy. a famous like go to voice actor like a lot of these like even Destiny's played one of the guys who plays literally all the main He's villains. He's the noodle man. Yeah, exactly. The noodle man. He makes the noodles. Yeah, the noodle man. You yeah, that the guy, noodles. right? Yeah. So, he he really is, he sounds like that. He's anyway, great. So, um, so, he plays Felix Faust and I found that kind of, it took away from the seriousness for me, man. It like, really I was just did. Like, it, really, wow, it, took, guys, it took all the gravitas out yeah, of that moment. Like, they built him up to be this epic guy and like yeah, he just looks yeah. like the most stereotypical racist Chinese Pretty depiction of anybody. Much. He looks like a man. And then he talks yeah. like that and I was like, what is yeah. this? And he's floating around like Aladdin on a, on a carpet yeah. or something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, it was a, it was a weird, it was a weird fight. Um, I mean, again, but they realize that's a goose chase to come back and they, and they find out that Richie's actually sold his, you know, soul pretty much and he turns into destiny he's kind of even erased uh, the you know black orchid which is the the spirit of the, the house but, of mystery the butler of the house yeah, of the mystery of the, Jarvis <laughs> yeah the Jarvis of the. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah so basically they go on and the, uh, the third act of this film is pretty much an all out kind of okay, city battle be- before we get to the third act though, yeah. but so n- now that we're all caught up with the, in that we finally b- by the time we get to the third act is the only point where we now know everybody's Place in yeah, this and, world, and we Swamp find, Thing also we kind know, of appears. We know, we know, point, yeah. we know who everybody is, why they're there, what their gripe with yeah. stuff is. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we know their backstory, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Now, I like how when we find out about people's backstory, mm-hmm. it's at the most opportune time to know about them, right? Yeah. In they're, introduced, we, they're recruited really well. They're recruited into well, the story, right? Yeah? So it's in a very similar Suicide Squad fashion, in that they had to. Oh. Batman basically has to go around, hmm. and he doesn't know it. He doesn't know who he's looking for. He doesn't know what kind of team he needs. He doesn't even know he needs a team, but he knows he doesn't need the Justice League guys, right? So he knows he needs somebody else. He goes to Zatanna. Zatanna says, "Well, there's an invisible dude behind you, dead bald, man, yeah. bald guy, dead man, Who looks like Doctor Manhattan." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so she's like, "She's he's part of the team now." They yeah. go and meet Constantine. Dude lives in. A Flying house or some crap. He's in the team now. He's the leader. <laughs> and then they meet uh, the dude in the earth, the guy in the, Swamp the green thing. Swamp yeah, Thing. Yeah, yeah. They meet him out of, out of nowhere. And then they meet Felix Faust. And then we need to know about Jason Blood's backstory. So we yeah. have to do a whole dream Jason, sequence to go back. Yeah. Basically, what I'm getting at is that there were so many, so many sub layers for each character, yeah, yeah. and each of them needed their own like. Scene for us to like walk through their life. Yeah. Back in the day, we had to see Zatanna back in the day. We had to see uh, the green. Actually, we didn't see the green back in the day, but we had to see. We didn't, but there's a great story. There's there a great also, yeah. Act Three reveal there, but um, yeah. we did see you know Dead Man stuff in the circus. We we did see Felix Faust. We did see Merlin. So the only thing that the biggest gripe I have with this, which yeah. is not that big, but still a gripe, mm-hmm. is the fact that there was a lot of jumping between different that things is, where, and I genuinely didn't know who I should like care about yeah. because all these guys are brand new to me and is that I, good though? Is that refreshing? I, I guess that is you're yeah. absolutely right that is refreshing because if this was made into a movie movie yeah. and it had a trailer then they would have like really built up like pay attention to no, dead man pay attention to this guy because pay attention Will Smith would be playing dead exactly, man exactly, exactly. Right? and the fact that there was nothing like that yeah. there were no names to it it was Except I for guess, Ros- Rosario Dawson Who plays Wonder Woman hmm. anyway. Is she? Yeah she does Alright yeah. well then, There you go um, <laughs> But yeah I mean like It was the weirdest problem to have In that I was enjoying myself Yeah But I, j- I just didn't know Where I should emotionally invest myself Okay Like should I care about Batman Because he's not doing anything Yeah he's just Obviously he's, 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 he's my guy But I 
don't see him doing much. So yeah. I guess Constantine is the guy. Constantine. But then when I'm thinking Constantine, I'm thinking Keanu. Yeah. I'm like, what would Keanu oh, do? Okay, like <laughs> you know that. what I mean? Like he's the only he's the only connection I have is okay. freaking Keanu Reeves. Right. Everybody else is brand new territory for me. So as I'm watching it, I'm just going like, this is really cool, but. I know somebody is going to die or something is going to happen to yeah, one of these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Who should I like shed a tear for? Anybody, no, fair enough, you know? Fair enough. My I, I I thought it was smartly done. I don't think it was like Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad Definitely. spends the first 20 oh, yeah, minutes yeah. doing that. I, I don't mean stupid. to say this was like huh, Suicide right, right, Squad. Right, right. I just I mean it was mean. done right. Yeah. yeah. No, as in like what the concept is. The concept, know, yeah, yeah. Which that, is a, which yeah. is not Suicide Squad does not own rights to team building team concept. Team building, recruiting, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So I like that, you know, everyone's recruited not like, hey, who do we find next? Yeah. Like that was a problem I would say Magnificent 7, you know, they need yeah. people so they literally go and they find this guy's cool or Ocean's 11 which is done in a slick montage. Yeah. But this one is like it's part of the story. So like they need to know where exactly uh, somebody is so they go to find Swamp Thing because he has roots in the earth. So you know like things like that I I I enjoy the fact that they were slowly kind of brought into 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 play. And you know even the hints of the past like you said in media res you know the Tizatanas and Constantine's past to Richie's like we don't know them very well but yeah. we know that oh okay cool this guy's a dick and you know he's had these kind of relations with everybody. Yeah. So I I did enjoy that um I think coming to the third act surprisingly I didn't mind the whole chaotic city destruction as much as I would and that's for the simple reason I think it's because the characters were new I I've yeah. not enjoyed all of these you know this iteration of the continuity for these characters like sure. Batman obviously we've been spoiled by Kevin Conroy you know like he, hmm. we, that's my Batman Uh, but Jason Momoa, who's kind of fit into the role now, well, you know, he's done a few of the movies. He's done Batman vs. Robin. He's done Justice League. War. But I thought that you in know, Agents the, of Shield, by the way, is he now? He is the president. Oh, dude, well, not the president, the uh, leader, the director, the director. Right. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, so he's kind of sitting uh, into the role pretty well right now. Uh, but I, I did enjoy the refreshing nature of the supernatural stuff. You know, I love. I love the weird stuff yeah, in the yeah. in the DC universe, and I and to see Swamp Thing and all that stuff, like it's cool, man. Like I I enjoy the, the we've we've seen these guys before, we've seen the Justice League before, and now I wanted to see something different, and they, they kind of delivered on that. And putting anti heroes pretty much in every kind of step of the way was quite cool. Uh, good scenes, um, more or less, like you know, including the poop monster. Say what you will, oh, it was great. weird. No, no, it was a great scene. Yeah, it was a great great scene. And uh, yeah, the third act is you know is a pretty straight up um, destroying the world, blah blah blah. But there's some really deep moments there. I think um you know so spoilers we're going to spoil this one. But um you know there's the death of a few prominent characters from the team which I didn't mm-hmm. expect actually to happen so yeah. yeah I thought this was the first movie uh, but you know the thing is about supernatural they can come back any time. So but <laughs> the fact that they managed to kill off like the swamp thing you know yeah. and they kind of do it in a very like s- tragic moment they say that swamp thing you think you're protecting the earth but you actually just secretly want to be human again mm-hmm. and i thought that was that was nice and then you see the the bones of this guy come out and he perishes instantly that was that was a bit that was hard i was like oh god damn i was not wait I, i didn't know that was going to happen yeah. um even uh, black orchid's death seemingly in the in this like yeah. he basically makes a walk into the, the fire, fire and she literally buzz because she's the fact bound that they to show him the fact that they show yeah, it was really was, bad, yeah. was pretty intense so yeah. i i thought a lot of those moments were harder than i was expecting mm-hmm. I, and because of that i really liked it last act was cool i like that they you know i like that constantine is is finally cool again you know like mm-hmm. you know he's he's a smart guy he's not just like a you know snarky guy who's just going smoking yeah. you know cigars all the time and doing stuff he's really sharp and he's got good powers and he's he's a really cool leading figure for this team so i really hope to s- see more of the justice league dark and you know even if the they do a film on it that would be pretty cool yeah. um so yeah so that was uh, that was my thing on the movie and <laughs> what i like that other moment also which is really good the uh, the shrouds all the mm-hmm. the grim reapers surround batman they're all trying to get to batman he's like you <laughs> you've been avoiding us for some time now and then he's like just, how do, he's like they ask him well, how do you like live you have so much pain and he's just like well i have a butler yeah. <laughs> that's what he says and <laughs> literally so i thought that there's a lot of cool moments in this film yeah. which i found very much lacking in the pretty innocuous justice league movies you know like uh, they're just they're fairly bland don't yeah. have that much personality as compared to these guys who are really just weird and because yeah. of that they have you know innately they have some personality so anyway so i enjoyed a lot of that um and uh, sure we needed batman to kind of buy into the whole thing just like how batman was in the assault on arkham it was a suicide squad movie mm-hmm. but it was called batman assault on arkham so eh, it was a weird one but this one i thoroughly enjoyed it i thought it was quite refreshing i thought it was good it yeah. got it i think it's been getting like an average like 7 
yeah, seven point five yeah. across the board. Yeah, it's, which not, I think, it's not exceptional. It's, it's, not, it's no not, flashpoint it's not, paradox. It's, or no, it's, like that. it's yeah. not amazing, yeah. but it is. It's definitely it's worth watching. Um, I like the Killing Joke significantly more. I'd give yeah. like the Killing Joke like a yeah, solid nine. Definitely, I mean, you know the I mean? cast like, in that is just, just yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, that's great, and I think that that is a really good way for them to go forward if that is an option at all in that rather than doing a franchise building saga and series in animated form mm-hmm. just doing like a just one off standalone little yeah you know obviously the the killing joke itself is it is just that one off story right that was a one shot yeah because yeah, so I, I mean think that's, this yeah. i think like just doing that in animated form is a brilliant thing because well they they need to find good arcs I mean they've been doing it so there are very few seminal like Batman comics like there's the killing joke I mean they're not very few they're a lot but like the main ones which you know are killing joke they've done that they did the Dark Knight Returns in a two part kind mm-hmm. of thing which was insane it was it was amazing and uh, you know so, so so they have been they have been doing they do it in between these movies but they I think they want to continue the series because like for me now I'm okay with Jason O'Mara playing Batman, right? Like, I'm buying into the fact that he's Batman now because I've just been by nature of hearing his voice and being Batman for so long. I like that I'm seeing him now as as Batman. And this is what it is. It's like how we had to get used to Batfleck, you know? Like, mm-hmm. in the beginning, I was like, oh, Ben Affleck. But now I'm just like, wow, this guy is Batman. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Plus, there's this really kids animated show, Justice League Action, which is going on, which has Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill doing the voices. It's really <laughs> silly and fun. It's, it's good stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm cool with this. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, I don't know how well Marvel is doing. I, I know they've had like a good run with, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. You've been saying that it's a great season. I've got a few of the episodes are very nice. But I'd also like to see Marvel do, you know, you know, they're doing so successfully with their movies. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I feel like it's uh, they they should continue with their their animated stuff. Also, they should be doing these one shots because they go very yeah. deep into this into the thing. Like so, you know, DC has this animated universe. Star Wars has Rebels and you know Clone Wars, which really dive into the mm-hmm. the gray areas of the you know the whole Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. And I think Marvel is missing that in a weird way. I think way. Marvel's missing it because I think they are winning like nobody's the, business they're winning with the, the movies. Rest of the game, yeah, they're winning the, the main game, the, yeah, yeah the, the chunk of the thing. And yeah. so I think. I suppose it's it not anytime soon if they were to do this one shot thing or mm-hmm. get more into animated stuff. It wouldn't happen anytime soon because now, right now, their focus is on just keep the ship afloat because yeah, we're doing yeah. so well. But yeah. in, and inversely, DC has just as many, you know, TV outlets and film yeah. outlets as Marvel. Yeah, well, CW almost as many on, right? film yeah. outlets. I, yeah, I think they they might have more TV than film. Yeah, they have a lot of TV, not as much film, and the film that they do have is not doing so well. So I think investing in this one off. It's cool. Animated thing is a really cool thing yeah. because Marvel is lacking in that. And they have they a don't, history of it. You they don't have an answer to that. For, yeah, yeah and I think doing that, it for thirty years, and yeah. that's great because I think you know nobody. I don't think anybody on the planet is looking for more movie and TV. <laughs> there is no need for that anymore. No, like, I mean, I, the, the supply is just huge. There is no. Yeah. I think now that you know on-demand viewing has come up, and the fact like Netflix has a new movie and a new TV show literally every freaking day, and I open yeah, that yeah. window up, I see a new thing on there. Yeah. So there is so much supply just like funneling in from everywhere yeah, it's, that's that I think lot. like an isolated, essentially Killing Joke felt to me like an indie movie. It yeah. felt like an indie film that I would see just pop up, like a directed, standalone directed kind of thing. by the friggin' Duplass brothers that yeah. I would see on Netflix. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just a re- yeah. totally one-off, like that nobody asked for. It just showed up. Yeah. You know, um, except I think pretty much everyone except we, was asking every for. Asked, every asked for, I know. <laughs> but I mean, like it wasn't on anybody's radar, like the way that they would put, you know, yeah, yeah. BVS on people's radar. Like nobody could ever not know that that movie was yeah, being made. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So I think like that would be an interesting way for them to go about because Marvel is. Doesn't even have a toe into that world. Uh, you know, Marvel has had some really good shows. I mean, they've had um, so they when they were doing this whole Ultimates run, they had Ultimate Spider-Man, which was kind of annoying because they made it really anime-ish, like you know, mm. in terms of how it's approached. Mm-hmm. And they had one really killer show called Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which ran for two seasons. Insanely good. Like, just you know, I can't tell you how good the writing was on that show. Like, it was not like you know. Like, you know, like the old school thing of every episode is standalone and goes back to status quo. It's like everything's leading up to everything. They did Secret Wars and characters you didn't know, like Skrulls, just like popped. It is so good. And uh, they cancelled it because they needed their next show. They wanted to realign the, the cartoons to make them in line with the movies. So then they created this thing called um, 
uh, what was it Avengers Assemble mm-hmm. which where the characters looked like the characters in the movie and hmm. you know mimic their personalities and everything yeah. like that which was also decent but it was not anything close to that and i think because they've been trying so hard to kind of keep their whole everything is connected you know tissue kind of running they have kind of f- lost out on the whole Oh, let's get the animated thing also in that, and they've, they've kind of struggled, I think, a little bit with it. So that's why I think Marvel is still kind of figuring that out. But I mean, they, they're winning the main, the main game, which is like the movies and things like that. So I don't think they have much to kind yeah, of. Yeah, they really about. don't. They don't. Yeah, but I mean, uh, safe to say, I'm I'm enjoying a lot of these movies, and I hope uh, we we still have we still have to watch the Boat War, Adam West. Batman, yeah, Kate how did I not on. know that this was out? I would have yeah. watched that immediately. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be doing. Uh, we will definitely talk about that soon. So yeah, that's our that's our episode. So final thoughts on uh, Justice League Dark. Would you like to see a live action version of this? No, no. I, I would love to. No, 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 no. no, no. There's <laughs> I would plenty love to watch one because I know that if I if I if they invest in doing that, they're gonna lose traction on what they're already trying to do yeah. and then not doing well no, so I let mean, them do what they're trying to do just get that right I and then loved, look at other stuff I would have loved if Guillermo did, did the movie because he would have he would have killed it I mean he's a guy who's a good director also I'm sure there are people that could do this well but I feel like I just I don't trust whoever is in charge mm-hmm. at DC right now to start a new branch of films when the one that they've already got mm-hmm. is by the way failing did you hear we spoke about in the last episode that uh Ben Affleck is no yeah. longer directing the Batman film. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully by the time this this episode comes out, it, we might have more light on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. This this news was dropped literally like just today, the yeah. day of we're recording. Yeah, so yeah. there might be something. Yeah, more yeah to definitely. Share. He's pretty, he's gone back and forth a lot. Yeah. So, but he seems pretty confident that he's not Meh. doing it now. We'll Let's see. see. All right, what cool. Else? That's our episode. We're gonna just be back in a second with some random news. Did you know that some termites in Africa have a pleasantly minty flavor? Did you know that India's largest music festival was in a way conceptualized in Estonia? Did you know that the awesomest chips in the world are found only inside US prisons? Hello, I'm Chuck. I'm Sriket. And I'm Naren. And together we are Simplified, a podcast that helps you appear smarter to an audience that knows no different. Or give you some stuff to talk about at parties. We are ultra crepidarians. And if you don't know what that means, then tune into Simplified with a B on iTunes, Audio Boom, or your favorite podcasting app. Episodes out every fortnight. Cool. We're talking about random news. I don't have one today, Jishnu. So why don't you enlighten me? Devon Sawa. Does the name mean anything to you? Devon Sawa. Devon? No. Sawa. No. Go for it. Tell me. This side is better be good. <laughs> this is as random as it gets. If I were a ghost and I were friendly, Casper, played by Devin Sawa, 22 years after the fact, oh my God, that reveals. Guy. This is the best part of the headline. This that is the that word guy? Re- the, 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 what the, the word reveals was used. <laughs> okay. He has revealed to the world yeah. that he is ready to do a sequel. Wow. It doesn't mean what's happening. He just, he just revealed. He just stole the like, world, guys. I know you've been wondering. Everybody. I know you've been dying to know. I am ready. I'm ready. <laughs> now, if you can find some to idiot, be friendly again. Find me an idiot who's willing to fund this movie in translucent form. <laughs> so there you go. Wow, that's, that's the guy. That's uh, there that's was the actually thing. A, you voiced the ghost basically. I guess no, yeah, really. no, in the movie the, with Christina Ricci. And Bill Pullman. Yeah, but this is like there was a there was not a kid, right? A kid? I guess the guy. Yeah, he's a guess was a ghost. He's like an animated ghost. <laughs> was it not? Oh, mocap wasn't a thing at that time. No, yeah, it was just yeah, probably it's just, just he, he voiced the bloody thing. Anyway, Devin wants his screen actors go to war. Hasn't I guess. Devin's voice broken significantly? <laughs> I'm sure. Right Oh my god He's, he's like Casper the friendly <laughs> ghost 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 Casper the Like Very The adult, old cranky ghost Yeah cr- <laughs> Crotchety <cranky> ghost <laughs> Crotchety ghost Oh that's weird Okay Devin Sawa So look him up De- Why Or don't No I won't <laughs> All I need to know about Devin why Sawa was, Has been explained Why to me is this, this news Why know. is this on like so, slow, slow day <laughs> Yeah seriously Slow day What the immigration ban Isn't like exciting enough For people Yeah Okay I guess this is an, The answer to the immigration <laughs> ban Is let's talk about Devin Sawa He's like But good on Devin Sawa For taking people's minds off That maybe perhaps For a second Okay cool right, That's our that's show that. <laughs> Yeah If you uh, liked anything We spoke about If you have to comment On DC Animated Films Or Devin Sawa Oh what's What's the uh, other scary ghost name Harry Fuzzy in his, the same movie? Not in the movie, in the cartoon. You know what I mean? Like the, there was the the angry ghost, not the angry ghost. The guy who's like <laughs> Harry Scary. That oh, was his Harry name. Scary. Okay, you, you, have to, the guy? you have to say no. You have to say it like him. Harry, Harry scary. scary. Got it. Got it, Jishnu. Because he's Harry. Is he? How? 
Uh, he has fur. He's ectoplasm. But he has hair and fur oh, or something yeah, like that. And a weird. big bow tie. Yes. Oh my and god. And a big red nose. Oh no. He's basically a clown in why ghost have form. I, why have I been reminded of this? Okay. But Jishnu, stop right there. Easy segue. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Into something. You know what a ghost is? Something that cannot be seen. Unless it wants to be seen. Yes. And then and it can also unsee itself. So speaking of those relevant keywords, <laughs> <laughs> The Seen and the Unseen is a podcast that is also by the same nec- network, which is IVM. And Are you going to say network? Network. And it's a it's a great net- network, which is uh, bigly. And hey, listen. Uh, so this is a great this is a great podcast. Um, I, I'm particularly intrigued by it because it you know it talks about things that have effects on stuff that you have you had no idea about. Like for example, Jishnu. It's like the it's almost like chaos theory or like the butterfly effect. It's like you know if I you know say um, went fishing one day and then you. Watched a movie Which you didn't like I have no clue Where is this going? Exactly That's what the scene Of the unseen is about How are these two things connected? Well It's because I was Going fishing And I forgot to tell you That we were going for a movie But you had to go watch it yourself I don't know So I'm just saying Like a stupid random connection But it's not stupid on that show It's great on that show that's what I was going to say. It's Hosted awesome. By Amit Verma. He's a yeah. smart man. He'll, he's really he'll, smart. He will articulate this for you we far better than no we can. We have good connections. You should go and listen to that show. Let, him, listen let the man do his job. I know. Let us say goodbye. Yeah. In peace. But but definitely watch Justice League Dark. If you have any comments, please mail us contactgeekfruit at gmail.com or go to the contact tab on our website www.geekfruit.in. You can find us on all social media, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Geekfruit HQ. Jishnu's uh, Twitter handle is Jishnu Guha. And mine is at Tejas Menon. So that's it You can find us uh, All over those places At Geek Fruit HQ Did you say that? Yeah I did I don't (laughs) listen to you Okay Okay. (laughs) Bye Bye you nerds. nerds Hey Jishnu from Geek Fruit Hey Tejas from Geek Fruit Hey man So you're a musician Hey so you're a musician too I know and if you're a musician The person who's listening to us two musicians And also Jishnu and Tejas from Geek Fruit Then you should listen to Made in India If you're a fan of music also Then you should listen to it too it's with me, independent music for you. Hey man, just help me out, man. I need some, I need some podcast, man. I haven't had a fix in a week. Just need some. Don't you worry about it. I got podcasts galore for you, man. Just go to ivmpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, man. I'm going to check it out.